Hello, and welcome to The Reading Room, the podcast brought to you by your Rowan County Public Library. I'm Morgan. I'm Atlanta. And I'm Emery. And it's December now. It's been December for a few days by the time that you hear this. I thought uh, you were going to say months, but... That's yeah. <laughs> well, it is still 2020. Oh, it's December. <laughs> I, I've been saying that for a long time, and I feel like it's starting to catch on. We're about to start year three of 2020. Yeah. Like oh, I've heard, God. I've heard other people <laughs> say that, like, you yeah, know, I, I was in the grocery store and said, man, were you guys slammed today? Cause it's the first of the month. You're always really busy. And the cashier just looked at me and then she kind of looked through me oh, and yeah. said, yeah, 2020 has been a rough year. And I knew without making eye contact because I was not capable in that right. moment of doing that, uh, that she was either frozen in time. I was speaking to an eldritch entity uh, disconnected from time and reality, which, I mean, that's most cashiers anyway. Right, right. Or everyone was in the same headspace, which in that instant felt kind of cool. Like, ah, oh, I've been saying that a lot. Now other people are saying it. But like, no, no, everyone's just... That's we, just a whole mood. Every all feeling. just hated here. Yeah, yeah. We all just hated here. <laughs> like it's too relatable and other people are discovering this on their own. Or maybe the know. podcast has a really large audience. Hey. You got recognized. Maybe it does. Listen, shout out to our food service and retail workers out there if you're listening to our par- podcast. Also shout out then, to you know, North Carolina because we know you're listening. <laughs> yes, we know that the folks at the Rowan County Library in Salisbury, North Carolina are listening and we appreciate you. <laughs> Um, but don't go to their website and tell them that. Please go to our website and call us about your about renewing your books. Yeah, <laughs> don't yes. call them. Don't call them. <laughs> Unless you live there. Unless you live there. And then do call them. Don't call <laughs> us. We will still help you, but we'll just give you their phone number. As per usual. As per usual. Yeah, that per hasn't us. happened to me in a while, admittedly. You know, it has been a little while. I wonder I'm, if Google updated. Maybe. I don't know. Or, maybe. hey, maybe people are listening to the podcast. Maybe they are. Mm-hmm. Maybe word's getting out. Word's um, huge. So we should get the word out, uh, speaking of that, about our December programming. We talked a little bit about this last time. Well, we talked a lot a bit about this last time, but we're going to talk about it more. <laughs> and y'all can just... Just listen you along. You wanted programs. We're giving you programs. We're giving Deal. you programming. So here it is. <laughs> uh, so let's get that out of the way first, our December schedule. Um, so there was earlier today, as of the time that you're listening to this, there was the first two sessions of our adult holiday craft, which is where uh, Jess was leading people through making that um, the winter themed door hanger. Like mm-hmm. the Let It Snow door hanger. So cute. I want to customize one of those so bad because I feel like the worst person on my block where I never Dude, decorate same. for anything, even for Halloween, which is my favorite holiday. I, I tried to decorate and I kept putting things off. And I then I went to the, some uncarved pumpkins on my porch. <laughs> <all> <laughs> right? Like I didn't, well, it's the season of COVID and I didn't even know when for sure that our trick or treat night started. Like I knew what day it was on, but I didn't know what time it was. So here I am in my pajamas and I just kind of like, <laughs> stick my head out from around my door and I'm looking around Scooby-Doo style to see if anyone can see me. And I shuffle out in my slippers. I love this visual. And so I just sit a giant bucket of candy at the top of the steps with a colored lantern to let people know that it's Halloween-y. Uh-huh. And a big chalkboard it's sign that's... candy. It's yeah. Halloween candy. It's Halloween candy. <laughs> and then a big chalkboard sign that's no like... razor blades are poison here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Just, it's all prepackaged, I promise. And then to make it even less suspicious, just a giant anonymous chalkboard sign with spiders and pumpkins on it that says please help yourself please happy halloween help yourself and then there was a link <laughs> to a therapy hotline yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I, I mean i wanted to put out decorations this year because i thought this year of all years we could use a little extra halloween spirit and that's the year of our lord 2020 times two yes and yeah. so i hung up one our sad lord, line <laughs> Of like purple bat shaped Christmas lights. (laughs) And it didn't even go all like I couldn't hang it up outside because I found out there's something wrong with a breaker or a wire or something in my house. And the plug in on my patio didn't work. The lights wouldn't come on. So I had to plug them in inside. And then they didn't go all the way around the perimeter (laughs) of the inside (laughs) living room window. They just went up one side and like slightly around the corner. So I rushed to Kroger to try and buy more. But because this is like the day before Halloween, they have already put everything away and the Christmas stuff is out. And that aisle is empty except Uh, for like, like, 
three plastic pumpkin buckets and two unpurchased packages of Reese's peanut butter cups, like at <laughs> on one shelf. And I was like, no, my holiday, my community. <laughs> and so then I just went home, turned all the lights off and like laid down on the floor <laughs> just for three hours. That's how I end every holiday. <laughs> That's how I end every day. Oh, wow. um, so right. I decided I'm just, I'm not doing Christmas. Relatable. That's so fair. <laughs> it's not happening. So fair. I was um, planning on being like the least festive. None of the outside of my house is decorated literally at all no there i left there are still uncarved pumpkins on my porch okay. um now listen it's just ago. start to grow in the ground um not speaking from personal experience you've all, never done this but you know if you leave a pumpkin outside long enough to rot you will have baby pumpkins growing from your yard and out from underneath of any trailer that you may live in which Happy is accident. A, yeah which is a, a great and convenient and earth-friendly way to save money next halloween it is exactly. beautiful there you go um so we talked about this a little i don't know if we talked about it on the podcast i've talked about it with my friends outside of work um, have y'all noticed that there are certain acceptable behaviors attached to each holiday or month that go past that month, but like not in reverse? Like, think about it. There's one major holiday per month. So the holiday for October is Halloween. Right. The holiday for November is Thanksgiving and Christmas and so on. And then you have something that starts in each month. But it's acceptable to keep doing it until the end of the following month before it gets weird. Such as in October, you put pumpkins out for Halloween because jack-o'-lanterns and stuff. Right. And then all of November is like the fall harvest month. So you still – pumpkins are okay. But starting December 1st, like 12.01 a.m. December the 1st, if there is still a pumpkin visible on your porch or in your window, you're the weird guy That's in, absolutely in town. That's absolutely true. And likewise – People are, you know, they start putting up their Christmas decorations in December, I hope, and not in November. Uh -huh. But let's be real, this is Eastern Kentucky, and it so is they acceptable. they start putting them up in August. Um, right, which, see, but that's the thing, right? Like, it doesn't go backwards. It's weird if you put them up in November. It's too early. But you can put them up in December. And you can leave them there until January 31st, and that's okay, because, like, who knows? Maybe you just want to save a little bit of cheer from the fading year before, or maybe you just are really busy and didn't get around to it, or whatever. Maybe you still have family coming in and celebrating Christmas with you, even in January. Yeah. But February 1st, if your Christmas lights are still up, now it's weird. That's absolutely but, true. But you do. Pink. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, listen. There's always loopholes in the pink, system. If they're pink, then you're weird to start with. Like, what are you doing with pink Why Christmas were they pink lights in December? Let, what listen, are you doing? <laughs> you can always loophole the system, but there are rules for a reason, folks. Don't put your Christmas decorations up until December first, and take them down January thirty first. Please, I'm begging you. And don't you. use pink Christmas lights. Just don't. Just These <laughs> rules are not real. They are. <laughs> and Lance is over here like, rules are made to be broken. <laughs> She is the Christmas rebel out here hanging up heart-shaped Valentine's light strings around her house. Gotta be sustainable. Can confirm that you don't have those. So I don't know who you're trying to fool right now. But. Lifetime, life round, year round lights inside of my house, though, of all different colors. There's purple and orange and white, and they look cute as heck. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I guess that's true. But like, I feel like lights are like the decoration that can be removed from the connotation to any holiday. Right, because, well, like I said, I had purple bat-shaped lights for <laughs> Halloween, so... Like, okay, well, they were bat-shaped, so those are Halloween lights, definitely. Right, right, but, like, you can get lights Maybe for any nice. holiday, but also if you just have... You you obviously can also get generic strings of lights and yeah. just hang them up, and they don't have to have anything to do mm -hmm. with Valentine's Day or Arbor Day or <laughs> whatever. Imagine celebrating... I put my lights up for Arbor Day every year. Imagine celebrating Arbor Day like we do Christmas. Well, not by cutting down a tree that would kind of like negate but that would defeat really the point bad, yeah. actually counterintuitive let's plant a tree and then string like green light and green and blue lights on it let's do that for arbor day plant a tree in arbor day and cut it down 
for Christmas. Mm. The Girl Scouts mm. plant trees on Arbor Day. Great. And, and honestly, I mean, we stand the Girl Scouts. We so really do. I we mean, should all seek to be more like the Girl Scouts. Uh, you know, we should seek to be accepting and inclusive and progressive and thoughtful and care about the earth uh, and also to be ruthless capitalists. And always yeah. leave a place cleaner than you found it. There you right. go. Absolutely. There you go. Good morals to have. And uh, so, so holiday challenge. Be a Girl Scout. No, I mean, I mean, <laughs> sure, ones. sure, but not on Halloween because that would be really weird. Oh, you're right. Yeah, just not on Halloween. Yeah, don't, don't be a Girl do, Scout unless you're already a Girl Scout. Don't do that if you're not though. Like as as an adult. Yeah. No. Don't do that. Cultural appropriation. Yeah, let's don't do that. <laughs> That's not the direction I was taking it, but Me neither, okay. But you know, cultural sure. appropriation. I'm sure. Girl yes. Scout culture. <laughs> It exists. I mean, Girl Scouts around the world Scout. are begging you, please don't dress up as a Girl Scout when <laughs> if you're not one. Um, it hurts place. everybody. It, what's your so, holiday challenge? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was. I'm sorry, I was. That mystified me. I um, I was gonna say, uh, confuse your friends, amuse your family, decorate for absolutely the wrong holiday, and challenge anyone to defy you. I love oh, it. Like yeah. decorate for. I don't know, the 4th of July in <laughs> January. Just do it. Put up your Valentine's decorations in August. When people oh. when people are like, uh, it's August, just make eye contact and say nothing until they go away. You know what I would so love to be <laughs> able to do? I would love to be able to get together, like, I don't know, some kind of giveaway basket, right? Of like some sort of swag from each holiday that's like really easily recognizable, right? And then have people decorate for the wrong holiday um, and like take pictures of it and post them and like tag us on social media. And then we could choose who did it the best or like <laughs> the worst, I uh -huh. guess. Yeah. And then they could just get this basket full of things that they could use to decorate for the wrong times all I, the time. I love you did that. It. Yeah, that's good. I love it. That's a whole program. That's right a there. whole program. I love that. You actually. guys want that. Yeah. Let us know. We'll do, do like a drawing. The Oh. I got Valentine's Day. <laughs> Shame that it's November. <laughs> I love it. Uh oh. <laughs> or do do the drawing in. Nothing really happens in June. June is kind of the saddest month. There's no major holiday. There's Pride month. There's in May. There's well, there's Pride. there is Pride Month, of course, but. Then as far as actual recognized federal holidays go, there's Father's oh. Day, and that's it. Mother's Day in May, Father's right, Day. Right, Mother's June. Yeah, exactly. But like we don't get off work for Father's Day or for or for Pride Month. So yeah. see that's the thing. Just yeah, you're right. you know, it's not the same thing as Martin Luther King Jr. Day or Christmas or something meaningful like that. So June needs more holiday cheer, I think. That's the month. So I would do do a drawing in May. Um and have people pick up their supplies by the end of May and then decorate in June. Oh, yeah. See? I'm very into that plan. Yeah. Maybe and we'll then, talk about... Maybe we'll do that. Yeah. So yeah. all of... We told you that story so we could tell you this one. The point being... I don't hang anything up on my door for any holiday ever, let alone, like, least of all any of the December ones. So I should definitely go to the adult holiday craft <laughs> and make this Let It Snow door hanger Same. so I have something to hang up. So our sad little houses so will look a little know. less sad. Hey, we got there. Um, <laughs> thanks for... This has been a great episode. Thanks for listening to our podcast. <laughs> I'm just going to see myself out. Um, so, so there will be another... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can pay for that train ride. We're no. just gonna have to <laughs> pull it back in. And, well, but at least they don't. At least you don't have to buy a ticket. Um, <laughs> we unfortunately the the downside is it, it is free, but we do just take you there, <laughs> whether you want to go or not. So, um, uh. so okay, there will be another session of. Our adult holiday craft, December the 9th, Thursday, December the 9th at 5 p.m. There is still time to register for that session. If it's not full, you can do that in person or over the phone. So make sure that you do that and get in. Uh, if there are any seats left, you want to be there. Jess always does great crafts. Speaking of which, December the 6th, this coming Monday, when you're listening to this, 
uh, we are going to have our teen holiday craft. And the teen holiday craft is going to be uh, customized snowflake ornaments. That is also at 5 p.m. So we provide all the materials for both of those. You don't have to bring anything. I don't know that anybody's going to object if you do. Like if you have very specific glitter glue or a particular paintbrush that you want to use, uh, Jess is not going to throw you out if you bring that. Uh, you know, yell at you and hurl, I don't know, snowballs or something. Don't put words in her mouth. She might. She could. Just don't brag about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because that's what really makes her go super safe. Yeah. Don't tell her that your craft supplies are better than her craft supplies. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes to hear that, even if you're not like a professional artist. Uh, well, I, I got my acrylic paints uh, from Michael's. I have a Verizon my color color <laughs> What are you using? Oh, Crayola you? or rose art? Rose art? Oh my god. Aren't those for like uh, children? <laughs> for like actual toddlers? Like, yes. Yes, they are. Yes, and. <laughs> yes, and also anyone else who wants to use them. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> That's not B. Don't use rose eyes. <laughs> yeah. That being said, as an artist, don't. So Perhaps. Atlanta's over here being the holiday apologist, <laughs> um, but absolutely just berating anyone who ever wants just, to use rose Oh, art. man. There is one crayon brand. <laughs> hang, hang up your pink Christmas lights in February if you want to. But, but leave your I, rose arts at home. If I catch you with rose art pencils. <laughs> I will. It's on site. There will be on Pencils site. It's the oh, the crayons. crayons. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that's... that wax. Oof. You know what? That's fair. I actually. can't even argue. To yeah. Be no, that's. No. It's because you've used rose art. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You got me. <laughs> Did you stop outing me right now? <laughs> Just, uh, I didn't come here to be dry. I came out to have a good time and I'm feeling very attacked. <laughs> so, yeah. So come to our teen and adult holiday crafts. Um, of course, we're going to continue to have story times every Monday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Except for the obvious dates, uh, such as we're going to be closed for Christmas on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And then we'll also be closed on the 26th because it's a Sunday. We will be closed anyway. And on the topic of holiday closures, don't forget, we will also be closed December 31st and January the 1st for New Year's as well. So that being said, there will not be a story time on December the 31st, or I'm sorry, of course there wouldn't be. Why would there be? That's a Friday on December the 23rd. Can I do two things at once? Can I look at my calendar and also use the English language? No, no. no. Who would accuse me of that? So on December the 23rd, there won't be a story time because we will be closed. Likewise, there will not be one on December the 13th because they are at four o'clock. And we are closing at 4 o'clock on the 13th. Why are we closing at 4 o'clock on the 13th? Well, I'm glad you asked. Have we got a show for you. <laughs> we do, because that is when our Holly Jolly holiday drive through event is taking place from 5 to 7 p.m. that evening. Show up. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to register. You just come visit us at the library. We're going to give you a slip with instructions on how to, like, you know, to drive around Tune your radio to 106.1 FM to hear Sandy read Twas the Night Before Christmas over your radio. We love that. Kind of jealous that I have to be here instead of in my car listening to that. Right. Gotta work. And we will not be taking individual photos with Santa this year. Sorry, unfortunately. But the clauses will be here so that children can wave at them. Oh. Along with Pete the Cat and some other storybook characters. And we're going to have a light display. If you haven't seen our decorations, we've already got holiday decorations out, some winter and Christmas and so forth. So you will drive around, and every child that comes will be able to stop at different stations and get free books, some treats, and a craft to take home, a crafting kit. So make sure that you come to that. It's going to be great fun. We're really looking forward to it. We're looking forward to seeing you. This went really well last year. And uh, this, we're expecting it to be even better this year, I hope. And we're better prepared for it because last year y'all really showed up. <laughs> like we were, do you remember stuffing bags hurriedly with more like giveaways, more treats and free books and everything? We were really everything? anticipating like this is a different type of event. We've never done it this way before. Mm -hmm. People aren't going to respond to it very well. First time that we've done stuff like this for um, COVID. You guys came out here. Yeah. <laughs> you came all the way out here. <laughs> Showed up. You did. And so we we prepped for, what was it? It was like 
maybe 80 or 100 bags or something like that that we had ready to give away to people. And by the end of the night, we had done maybe 300. It was a lot. So there were a bunch of us there who were just hurriedly, as fast as we could, we formed an assembly line and were like stuffing books and bookmarks and treats and everything into bags and then trying to find more bags because we (laughs) ran out of bags. And it was a lot of fun. It was a blast for us. We were so glad that it turned out so well for you. So we want this one to be just as good are even better. So make sure that you come out December 13th, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. for the Holly Jolly Holiday drive through And you will also find on your welcome slip for the drive through a little note telling you that December the 13th is also when our winter reading program kicks off. I'm very excited about that. So winter reading is going to run from December 13th to February 13th. We will have a web page up where you can find all of the information. There's also a Facebook event that has already been published. You can find it there and we'll post some more links and updates there. So with winter reading, all you have to do is read. Sign up starting December the 13th. Come by, pick up your activity kit. We're going to give you a bag that's got a reading log in it. You track the books that you've read or audio books that you've listened to. And you can also read ebooks. You can read graphic novels. As long as you read, it doesn't count. Just read something age appropriate for your category and track that you've read it. And if you read a certain minimum number of books, you're going to get free books. And if you are a teen or an adult, 13 or older, then if you read at least five books appropriate to your age category, you will be entered in our grand prize drawing for a Coffee Tree Books gift card that you can spend at Coffee Tree Books to get even more books, or at the Fuzzy Duck to get an iced chai or a hot ginger dragon or or one of their wonderful falafel sandwiches, or, oh my God, I had the grilled cheese and tomato soup special the other day. Okay. And I've decided that I'm going to quit working here just... um, because we do too many of these drawings for things that I need in my life, and I'm not allowed to enter them. <laughs> We're never allowed to enter them. Um, Yeah, as an employee, we're never allowed to enter. So if I quit my job right now, I'll still have time to jump on it. Just quit, enter the drawing, and then uh, go ask Tim for your job back. What do you lose? You can always get your job back. Is the win you can live off of that card? There you go. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Who needs right? Yeah, because. Because, I mean, a gift card is going to go a long way at the Fuzzy Duck or at Coffee Tree Books. So. Bye, guys. I'm out. <laughs> so, yeah, we all we know that y'all love Coffee Tree and we know that y'all love the Fuzzy Duck and we do, too. So make sure to sign up for winter reading. And you have got from December 13th till February the 13th to read, read, read. And all you have to do is read what you were going to read anyway and just write it down. And let us know at the end of the program, and we'll see who wins those gift cards and who gets all of these free books that we are very excited. So you can check out more at rowancountylibrary.org slash winter dash reading. And all of the information will be there. And we will also be posting links on the other programming pages and on the Facebook event to take you to that page to make it as easy as possible. So there's going to be a craft and a round on Monday the 13th, that morning as well, from 10 to 15. And we are having movie night at 5.30 p.m. on December the 16th. And this movie is going to be Elf, starring Will Ferrell. Not with Will Ferrell, as we talked about last time. (laughs) Will Ferrell's not coming here to watch the movie with you. Starring him, not with him. Yes. Gosh. I still imagine if we could get Will Ferrell to come down here and just... We unfortunately were not able to obtain a Will Ferrell costume in time uh, to have... <laughs> to have our Will Ferrell impersonator. <laughs> right. Um, so I guess you'll just have to see him on the screen. Who do you think here would do the best Will Ferrell impression? Yeah. Taylor. Do you think I, I think Bailey? That that's my guess. That okay. Okay. That's a that's a dark horse prediction, Taylor but I'm NIT. I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay. I see it. I think. Hmm. But which Will Ferrell? Like Anchorman Will Ferrell, or like Step Brothers Will Ferrell, or like Stranger Than Fiction Will Ferrell? Because I, I could see like that one. Will Ferrell the dude, like as a person. Oh, just as like an Will actor, Ferrell, like, like not. Yeah. 
as a character. Yeah, right, like just like, oh, just okay. Will Ferrell like on the Tonight Show kind okay. of. Okay. I think yeah. if we have to divide it into his characters, it could be the whole staff. We might all have an I think applicable right. Will Ferrell character. And that's that's the real Christmas miracles. The, we all have a little Will Ferrell inside of us. The Will Ferrell you little need along the way. Yeah. A the real Will. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Beautiful. That's yeah. That's the real. That's the holiday magic. Is that the the real something? Something was the Will Ferrell we had in our hearts the whole yeah. time. Yeah. I, okay. God bless sure. us, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So remember that. Carry that energy with you. Into, Remember that you are Will Ferrell. Into month 25 of 2020. <laughs> and maybe if we all wish hard enough and hope hard enough, it will actually be 2022 instead. <laughs> uh, Can you imagine just waking up adjusted to the year that it is? Like, Couldn't wow. be me. No. Couldn't be me. Uh, not least of all, because I don't know if I ever want to get used to this. Well, that's fair. I Same. mean, that's that's the main thing. I don't know that I ever want this to be normal. So uh, we also have one more program this month, and that is going to be our next uh, teen drop-in hangout. We did one of those in November. We're doing another one this year. Or, well, this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> listen to me, I I'm, obviously am adjusted. This month, December the 15th from 4 to 7, teens are invited to come to an ugly Christmas sweater party. Oh, that's which cool. I am very jealous that I'm not invited to. <sighs> Same. Because Why are we not doing an adult one of those? Honestly, the best holiday parties are like the ugly sweater parties. I don't care what time of year it is. Like, catch me in July with my ugly Independence Day sweater. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> a sweater in I July. Yes, just sweating profusely outside <laughs> next to the barbecue, waiting for my turn at a cheeseburger, arms up like that kid from A Christmas Story. Shoving ice cubes into your mouth. Yeah, just like a popsicle in each hand, yeah. just aggressively chowing down on potato chips at the, the family <laughs> barbecue in my ugly Independence Day sweater. I love it. Absolutely. I Let's make just, this every holiday tradition is this now. I would have now. sweat stains down to my hips. So <laughs> and that's, that's what bad. we're here for. Okay. Yeah, that's no, that's the whole point, right? Part of the look. I mean, I can't say I would start sweating at like 32 Fahrenheit. So same. <laughs> God, just, same. Even, even indoors in the air conditioning, I'm here. Catch me in my ugly Christmas sweater. And I'm just like, I want to go home. <laughs> Can I take this off now? I wore layers. There are five feet of snow outside. We're all trapped here. We're eating each other to survive. Oh, but it's so hot, though. Ugly <laughs> Christmas tank top. Blonde. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can somebody get a fan? <laughs> yeah, like my ugly Christmas, um, like sweat band. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's got like elf ears on it, and also reindeer antlers, and a big light up like red uh, Rudolph yeah. nose on the front. Jingle bells, um, Plays probably jingle bells. a couple of pine fronds. Just yes, uh, and and also mistletoe. Yeah mistletoe hanging from the sweaty sweat band because like that's you just look like a, a mistletoe fun... angler fish yeah covered in sweat. <laughs> exactly oh right. no there you go take it up a notch it's even on like a little wire so it's yes. dangling out in front of you and then also attached to the wire you can have a fan that spritzes water so that you are always cooling down there you go it's like get under the mistletoe kiss me so we can both be why cool. do i feel like this is the prime get up to officiate a christmas wedding Oh, absolutely. Because kissing under the mistletoe. Absolutely. Well, if you're officiating... Though, oh, they're just going to have to get really close oh, to no, you. Oh, no, no, no. I see. Okay. It's because of the because angler it's sticking fish out. Exactly. Right. So they kiss in front of you exactly. under the mistletoe. I was thinking, like, I don't want to I don't want to kiss like the priest or the justice of the peace or whatever no I mean, no no don't so <laughs> we could have had a Will Ferrell costume all along <laughs> Wow. Wow. It really was the Will Ferrell we found along the way. <laughs> it, really, it really was. Wow. <laughs> wow, y'all. Uh, we did it. We circle. did it. We made it. Train ride number two. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, obviously, since Atlanta is determined to be MVP of this episode, why don't you tell us about this month's blog post that just went up yesterday? There's a new blog post. Well, on the first. 
There's a new blog post for December. <laughs> Check it out to have some holiday recommendations, winter recommendations. There are even some spooky things left over from Halloween because I think that for some reason in the winter, it's just the spookiest time for me. I would hate to it be is. trapped in the wilderness in the snow or something. It's all dark I and get cold. That. Like, and like, it's a slightly yeah, different, it, it's a different vibe from autumn horror or autumn spookiness but it is there because you have things like the fear of being trapped out in the cold oh losing your way uh and of course too i mean between climate change and this just being eastern kentucky when was the last time we actually saw snow that wasn't a blizzard that locked us in our homes right oh, yeah. so there's the fear of like being trapped in the dark that primal fear of oh the sun's going away for six months uh but also just it's kind of that classic fall weather that you normally think of where it's it's rainy, it's muddy outside, it's gross. It is. It looks spooky. You look out and you can see a thick layer of fog separating you from your neighbors. You're like, oh, this is when the Sasquatch comes and gets me. <laughs> the Christmas Squatch. <laughs> He's like, coming for you. <laughs> it's like the first season, first season, the first <laughs> scene of Misery. Which I should have included. Oh, yeah. oh you're Log right. Oh, oh yeah, actually. It. Yeah. But yeah, he's like going out for a drive in the horrible weather. Mm -hmm. Something horribly scary happens, and then it's horribly scary for the rest of the book. But it's very winter. Very it is. Winter it's really like curl up on your leather sofa in front of your brick fireplace in your study with a hot apple library. cider yeah with a hot apple cider and a glass you mug smell the log fire yeah yeah um that's the vibe and you want to be scared in that vibe mm -hmm. so i don't know just read some stuff uh, yeah the spooks yep. do not end with october that is something that we talked about what's permissible to happen like after yeah, the month after that's true. no no Horror is uh, free to everyone and available all year round. Yeah. All year round. I definitely agree. Always acceptable. But you had a lot of other good picks on there, too, that weren't like ghost stories. There are quite a few fun things. Um, one of my favorite books ever was on there. I couldn't resist but putting Blankets by Craig Thompson. It is a giant graphic novel. Um, with, but since it's a graphic novel, it's a fairly quick read. And it tells like the entire story of a man's life and how he's affected by the people around him. I have a funny story about that book, really. It's part of the reason that I'm so passionate about libraries and a lack of censorship. Because when I was 13, I asked my local library to order that book for me, as most libraries do. Here at your Rowan County Public Library, we will order whatever book you're looking for. We'll Absolutely. get a hold of it. So they did order it for me. But whenever I went to check it out, they kind of were hesitant. I don't know that they realized how young I was at the time. And the book is, it's not graphic. I think that it's a lovely story that anyone should have access to. It's in the young adult section of my blog post. But they kind of gave me a look and they were like, oh, this isn't really the right content. And I told them that I wanted to read it. But they also told me flat out when I left with the book that whenever I returned it, it was going to be removed from their catalog and no oh, wow. one else would be reading it. And that just broke my heart. Wow. And so like the, from that point, I kind of like knew I don't think that I would want to run a library like that. Yeah. And I've learned that libraries aren't really run like that. It's just something that maybe they deemed inappropriate for their children's section. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't realize that they could put it somewhere else. Right. I don't know what their what their plan was with it, but I was a bad person and it's not back. I ended up buying that book from the library. Mm -hmm. Wow. Don't blame you at all. It's no. on my shelf now. And it is on a brand new display at the front here at the library. We have an as seen on the RCPL blog display. Hopefully that'll stay up year round and we'll be able to switch it out month by month. But you'll always get a sneak peek at the new blog post if you come in the day before upload. Awesome. Which is the first day of the month every month so definitely check that out and see this is what we do so you know you get a little taste of uh you know fighting censorship you celebrate banned books week again <laughs> all over banned with, books with, week every week yeah, at the a, library a baby. locally <laughs> locally banned <laughs> locally banned read blankets we want you to have full access <laughs> there you go there you go actually a lot of your picks inspired me like i, I saw some books on there i was like oh hmm 
I want to read this now because they were books that I didn't know about or they were books that I had maybe this always happens with your blog post. I'll see something on there that I have absolutely passed on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even something I have picked up and kind of looked at and then set back down without reading it. And when I see it on your blog post, it's like, okay, obviously I should read. This there's book. my sign. <laughs> yeah. Like there's my sign. Like I need to go back and find this book again because now Atlanta is recommending it to me. And so obviously I need to trust this advice and actually read and which is great because I tend to, even though I read a lot, uh, I read nonfiction for professional reasons. And then I read like fantasy and sci-fi is kind mm -hmm. of my comfort box Same. and I need to get out of that box more and read more biographies and I need to read more westerns and I need to read more romance and I need to read more comedy and more slice of life and more coming of age and all of this kind of stuff and I know that our growing graphic novel section has helped me a lot with that because for me it is a lot more entertaining and interesting to absorb some of those different kinds of materials in that format and it may be for you as well. So we try to remind people graphic novels are not like they're not Sunday comic strips. But even if they were, those are also for all ages, folks. It doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, you can and should check out graphic novels and, and different kinds of media. If you listen to both audiobooks and also read regular books. There's no reason not to consume graphic novels as well. And you may find that some stories that you just couldn't get all the way through or that didn't grab you in print or in audio may hit you differently in graphic novel format. So check them out. I know that it has helped me to broaden my own personal catalog and it may do the same thing for you. So Check out the blog, get those reading recommendations. Atlanta is always on point with those, and she puts them on there and chooses them for a reason, uh, and it is because they are worth reading. So definitely go check it out. And you can find our blog by going to rowancountylibrary.org, and right there, hover over the About button, and when you drop down, you'll see RCPL blog, and you can go straight to it. And there will also, of course, be a link on our Facebook to that post. So uh, by the time that you hear this, you may have to scroll down a little bit, but you can find it. If you do get into graphic novels and we don't have something that you're interested in, I know that I read a lot of my graphic novels on both Libby and Hoopla. They have really good graphic novel collections. Hoopla even lets you read it one panel at a time so you don't accidentally skip ahead. Um, as somebody that struggles with ADHD, that's a big problem for me with comic books and graphic novels. So I have been reading them one panel at a time and it's so interesting. I actually didn't know that they had that feature. I didn't either. Because on Libby, which is where I read most of my graphic novels that I don't just physically check out, mm -hmm. uh, they have what is called a fit Fixed format so that when you read it, it shows you one page at a time and then you can sort of pinch zoom in and out. Mm, right. But I like that feature for Hoopla. <clears throat> That's... It almost even zooms in since the panels are small. It mm. makes that one panel larger to fill up your phone screen or whatever you're reading on. Awesome. So, yeah, if you're reading on a tablet or a phone or whatever, it's going to automatically size to that. So check it out. And uh, if you're not already using any of our digital borrowing apps, there's never been a better time, especially because, of course, again, it is winter. So we're going to get snowed in probably. It's going to be rainy and gross when it's not snowing. We're not going to want to go out. There is no better time to sit at home and read. And if you are using Libby or Hoopla or Freeding, you can read without even leaving your home. All you need is your library card, and it's absolutely free. If you want help getting set up with those, then all you have to do is come visit us or call. And you can also find all of our apps on the digital resources page on our website. So this is a perfect time to say that in addition to Freeding and Hoopla, you should be using Libby, even if you're using Overdrive right now. Because again, when February comes, like around the same time that winter reading comes to an end, Overdrive is also coming to an end. You'll still be able to use your same account and your same login and your same library card and have access to all of the same items on Libby as you do on Overdrive, but you do need to try to go ahead and make the switch because the Overdrive app is going away. It's going to stop working. 
and it won't happen all at once. It'll happen in bits and pieces. So now is the best time to go ahead and start learning to use Libby while maybe you can still kind of go back and forth between it and overdrive. So that way you can have your comfort zone if you're an overdrive user, but still teach yourself how to use Libby and not feel pressured about it. Because come February, we're all going to be feeling the pressure when overdrive just isn't showing up in the app store or the Google Play store anymore. So make sure that you do that. And all of those apps count towards our winter reading program. So if you register for winter reading, remember that you can use Freeding or Hoopla or Libby and check out ebooks, audiobooks, graphic novels, even magazines. Read them. And you can still log those on your reading log. Those count because digital reading is still reading, folks. Even if you love, like me, the weight of a physical book in your hand, which is great. Reading digitally is still just the same thing. It is if it's a different experience, but mm -hmm. you are consuming the same content. You're getting the same information in your brain. So it still counts for winter reading as well. For those of you who maybe have a hard time getting out here to check out physical books or if the bookmobile can't get to you on time, whatever. I think it's very similar to the way that you explained the difference or the switch from Overdrive to Libby. It is not the access to the information that is changing, but the way that you access the information. And I think that that applies to the format you're reading a mm -hmm. book because you are still, you're reading it. It's just the way that you're accessing that, right, exactly. that book. Absolutely. I think my favorite thing that a lot of folks don't necessarily have a reason to think about up front when the conversation arises uh, regarding digital reading like ebooks and audiobooks and so forth is that because of those technologies because of the internet because of apps like libby and so forth we are now in an era where it is so much easier for people to tell their story previously when books existed only in print format you had to go through an agent and a publishing house mm -hmm. and stuff in order to get your book printed and then those print copies had to be moved and sold by booksellers in order to get them into the hands of people who would read them. And with the dawning of the age of the ebook and the audiobook, anyone who wants to write a book can do that. Now, for better or worse, <laughs> we've all read some shoddy fan fiction. But we've also all read some really good stuff, whether that is fan fiction or whether that is someone's biography or someone's mm -hmm. personal story that's meaningful to them that maybe no print publisher would be willing to pick up. But because they could put it out on AO3 or something like that, it's, it's out there. And that makes everyone's story more accessible. And when people's stories are more accessible to other people, that brings all of us closer together. And that's what we are all about, which is why we want you to read anything and everything, not just for winter reading, but all year long, every year. So with that, we'll bid you farewell for now, and we will see you again December the 18th when we will be talking about January programming. We want to give you a heads up because our first January episode will be on the 8th. Since we are closed on January the 1st, we're not going to be doing a podcast episode, even though that is the first Saturday. We're going to be doing it on the 8th, and what that means is that some of our programs that are coming back, like Teen Anime Club, <laughs> will have already had their first session, so we'll get more into that then. So tune back in on December the 18th when we talk about that. Make sure that you're following us on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Goodreads, and on the YouTube channel as well as on our website so that you can catch updates, you can see all the programs we're doing. And if you go to our programming page, we have a calendar that's got all of this stuff on it, including individual event details. And then you can just click that uh, handy-dandy button down at the bottom to add that Google Calendar to your Google Calendar. Really easy. So do that to stay abreast of what's going on, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, and I'm Morgan. I'm Atlanta. I'm Emery. And this has been The Reading Room, the podcast brought to you by your Rowan County Public Library. 